Joining us to talk about chemical irritants is Dr. Grace Zeen. Tell me about Charles now. You know, what were some of his rights under OSHA or the Occupational Safety and Health Administration? Well, a worker under OSHA, the, the right to know law or hazard communication standard, has a right to know what chemicals they're exposed to. The employer is supposed to have safety data sheets on those chemicals. Now, safety data sheets do often uh, leave off some of the substances. The chronic health effects are not great, but at least uh, it's a starting point, and it will tell the person whether it's an irritant, if it's fat-soluble, uh, it means it's likely to go into the brain uh, and can, can affect the brain. But Charles and his coworkers uh, had symptoms. Uh, he felt worse at work and, and better away from work. So that's a tip-off right there that this is an occupational problem. And it's so important for action to be taken before the person becomes disabled because once they're too sick to work, it's very hard to ever get them healthy enough to return to a regular workplace. Dr. Zine, thanks for joining us today. Very useful information for, I'm sure, lots of folks. You're very welcome. When we come back, we'll talk with an expert about how to kill those bugs without killing ourselves. Healthline will be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Healthline. We all know we're supposed to be careful with pesticides and watch what's used on the foods we eat. But knowing and doing can be two separate things. Joining us to talk about pesticides and alternatives is Alan Cohen, board member of Beyond Pesticides, a nonprofit group that calls itself a national coalition against the misuse of pesticides. Alan, thanks for joining us. Okay. Thank you for having me, Kevin. Let's talk about the, the big picture a little bit here. How bad are pesticides and how are they around us without our even knowing it? Pesticides are all over. They're probably in the studio with us here. They're, in, um, they're used on foods, they're used in uh, homes, they're used in offices, they're used in operating rooms. Uh, the things that sterilize, the materials that sterilize instruments are, are registered by the EPA as pesticides because they're killing something. They're killing the bacteria. Are there really safe pesticides? The actual use of the word safe and pesticides in the same sentence is forbidden by the Federal Trade Commission. Pesticides are defined by law as economic poisons. They cannot be safe. They cannot be used uh, in anything but to kill something. So uh, there are uh, chemicals that are safer to use or less toxic to use, but you can't say there actually is a safe pesticide. But there are less toxic alternatives. That Absolutely. We can, okay. can, can you show us a few? I think you brought some things here I that sure we did. might be using instead. Before talking about uh, chemicals, I'd like to talk about what you have to think like a pest. I have a company called Biological Pest Management, and for 10 years we've been managing pests with little or no um, traditional pesticides, no sprays. Yeah. But if you have to think like a pest, and what do pests need? They need just what we need, food, water, and shelter. That's why one of my first tools is a caulk gun. If we're talking about something like um, cockroaches, you want to seal up the openings at the bottom of the, um, the floor and wall joints. You want to seal up an opening at the countertop or the countertop hits the wall. Any little opening, an uh, eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, insects can hide in. And if you seal those up, you can use clear caulk so it's not visible at all and then they don't have a place to hide. So that's one thing. How about this little device? Yeah, that's Ants? a great, uh, nope, that's a, well, an ant could get caught in there, yeah. Kevin, but this is a sticky trap specifically, has a little pheromone inside here that is for um, German roaches and other roaches. They like to smell that, it doesn't harm anyone, it's just sticky. You put this in a corner in a, by a refrigerator or in a corner on a countertop, the roaches will find their way in there, and by the way they're oriented, we know which direction they came from, whether they came from here or there, we know where they're coming from, we know their sex, we know their type, we know their age, is it a nymph, is it an adult, and it, that means a lot for what kind of infestation rate you have. Cool. And then you can use something like this, a gel bait, very specific, again, no sprays, or this is a uh, boric acid product like uh, Dr. Zim was talking about. This is boric acid formula with uh, corn cobs, ground up corn cobs. So it's a bait, they take this back and cockroaches share it. Uh, not the way ants do, but if a cockroach dies, other cockroaches will eat it. They're cannibalistic. Oh, nice. So, That's a happy thought. Right there. Happy thought. Are there foods that are more susceptible to contamination from pesticides? A good rule of thumb on foods is that you want to try to buy local, because if a food is trucked in from 
very far away from California uh, if, you, if you're living on the East Coast or from Chile in the winter. Uh, if it's brought in, it's probably going to have fungicides and other preservatives on it. So the, a good rule of thumb is try to buy local. Try to know where your food's coming from. from a, buy organic if you can. Uh, certain foods have higher concentration of pesticides on them. Um, strawberries can have up to 75 different chemicals applied in one season. They're very high value crops, so people use a lot of chemicals to protect them. There's some good resources. Beyond Pesticides is an organization that I'm on the board of, and you can go to our website and find out about the chemicals used on different um, products, beyondpesticides.org, and we have a lot of good information about chemicals used inside the home and in agriculture and ways to avoid them. There's some great information on how to grow an organic lawn that we and other organizations make available. You can overseed. You can use things like corn gluten to prevent weeds in the springtime. You can put seed on in the spring, summer, and fall. Um, yes, washing is important, but I think it's more important not to have that initial exposure. Good. Alan, thank you very much. Wonderful information, okay. and I'm going to bring some of this home to my wife for sure. Great. Healthline will be right back with a recap, so please stay with us. Before we leave, let's revisit the highlights of today's show. Chemical injuries can happen from exposure at work or in your home. If you have symptoms such as a rash, tightness in your throat, sinusitis, or feel fatigue, think about your exposure to chemicals. Irritants can travel through heating and air conditioning ducts causing contamination throughout your home. For more information about chemical exposures, go to www.chemicalinjury.net. And to learn about your alternative pesticide use, visit www.beyondpesticides.org. You can also find links on our site at www.rl.tv or phone us at 1-800-R-LIVING. That's it for this edition of Healthline. Thanks for watching. Until next time, here's wishing you the best of health.